But in all reality, people can get by with very little power consumption, very, very small power needs. And the reason why I'm choosing 12 volt as the topic today, um, even though I do have a 24 volt system, I've had 12 volt systems in the past. Uh, this is my second off-grid home that I've, that I've built. And the first one I did 12 volt and the second one I thought, well, I'm gonna do a little bit better this time. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna step up and go with a 24 volt system. But in all reality, it really hasn't been that much beneficial. In fact, it's, it's created some limitations for me that I didn't have previously. And I'll explain some of those in my video right now. All right, so 12 volt system. You know, the thing about 12 volt system is they're cheap. Everything about them is cheap. You can buy a cheap 12 volt inverter that's very sufficient. I, I ran my whole house on a, on a Cobra 2500 watt inverter. And that inverter didn't cost me any more than $125 brand spanking new back in the day. Uh, and you can get these 12 volt inverters. Now that was a modified sine wave and, and that was fine. That ran my whole house. I even had a washing machine. I spent some extra money for my washing machine. The, the washing machine that I purchased was a Stabber, which was a high end washing machine that was specifically designed for off grid use, specifically designed to work with a modified sine wave inverter. Now the inverters are less of, less of a thing nowadays. I mean, you can get sine wave inverters, the cheap Chinese ones for pretty cheap. In fact, I bought my, 24 volt inverter for around 150 bucks uh, for a 6,000 watt inverter. Now, of course, that was a power jack inverter and I have a video on that um, as well. Uh, maybe I'll put a link up here in the description, but I can buy 12 volt inverters all day long for that amount of money. So the point of it is, is I was able to run my whole house with no problem on a 2,500 watt 12 volt inverter and my battery banks were very close to my inverter. So the large cables wasn't a big deal either. You know, it's fairly easy to find uh, old welding cables, uh, you know, which work really good because of their flexibility and everything and to be able to hook your batteries up to a to a cheap 12 volt inverter and to be able to run your whole house on on a low amount of power, especially if you did like I did and you get, you know, you spend your money on a washing machine like the Stabber, which now I think the LGs would probably run just as good for, you know, uh, less than half of the price. I, I have an LG washer and an LG dryer and they work really good on the system that I have now. Of course, I do run pure sine wave, but you know, like I said, that's less of a problem nowadays if sine wave inverters are way cheaper than they used to be. Everything's cheaper than it used to be. Now in California, that off-grid home that I wired, I wired all of my, all of my lights for 12 volts. Now I understand they, they make a lot of 20, you can wire your house with 24 volts nowadays and they make a lot of 24 volt uh, accessories now and lighting and everything else and and so there are actually a, quite a few things that you can run direct DC on which to me is a real benefit because if your inverter ever goes out you can run your house on like a priority load with just DC current and and this is very important like my well pump I'm running it on t uh, 24 volts as well and so if my air inverter goes out I still have water so reason number two would be uh, the availability of 12 volt appliances 12 volt uh, products that you can plug and play with the straight DC 12 volt current you know of course you have uh, all automobiles are or most automobiles are 24 volts this is a good thing because you can buy now you can buy fans you can buy heaters you can buy refrigerators you can buy freezers you can you can purchase uh, light. There's a lot of options for recharging, you know, cordless batteries with the, you know, through a 12 volt system. To be honest, I mean, there's, there's just a hundreds, there's hundreds of different accessories and options for 12 volts. And the third reason is availability. You know, there's, there's stuff everywhere that, that accommodates 12 volt systems. You know, your standard 12 volt, 12 volt system can be set up very cheaply you know you can get a 12 volt charge controller for very inexpensive you can run your system as simply as just having one 12 volt battery and wire your house with 12 volt sockets and, and some 12 volt lighting very simple to do and it, it'll work great and it'll be very sufficient i know that my rv that that i owned had a 12 volt system and all of my lights and the entire RV was 12 volts. My refrigerator was able to run on 12 volts. You know, if I needed to charge a laptop or something, I could plug in a small 100 watt inverter or so into a, 
cigarette receptacle, cigarette lighter receptacle. And so the availability of these things is, you know, they're, you can readily pick them up almost anywhere. You can set a simple 12 volt system up for almost no money. And if you can learn to live without, you know, a whole lot of extra power, which off grid, that's the whole idea, right? Is to, is to, is to structure your home where, where you're able to do just that. Because even with the very powerful system, uh, you're still going to be limited as far as what you can do. You know, I can't run, I don't run a heating blanket or a, or electric heater. I don't have an electric furnace or electric stove. There's a lot of things, that, a lot of appliances that you just can't run on any system unless it's just gigantic. Maybe there's some people out there that are willing to pay huge amounts of money for a gigantic system. Um, in fact, I just visited a neighbor. He has a um, probably around 5,000 watts of solar. He has a huge battery bank, a huge inverter. He has a backup generator, um, which they wind up burning quite a bit of propane every year just to meet their electrical needs. And to me, this is a little counterintuitive of the off-grid concept. The off-grid concept to me wants to be something that you can survive on very little and, and very comfortably. You can survive very comfortably on very little. So if you're heating your house with wood or propane, or something like that. Your basic needs are, are very small, especially with modern appliances. Even the the Energy Star rated appliances are are something where, if if you were to to want a, an accessorized charging system to charge charge your batteries, you know it's not real hard to do. You just take a motor with the pulley on it and you hook an alternator to it, and boom, there you go. You have something to charge your 12 volt battery with very simply, very easy, very cheaply, you know, with very little hassle and very little thinking involved. It's all there. So there's there's so many options that you can that you can find out there as far as charging your batteries. You can charge your batteries with a with the standard battery charger hooked to a generator, although it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to go from from AC to DC to back to AC again. So I would say for a tiny house or an RV, um, there's so many different, you know, even a, even a standard size home. I, you know, like I said, the home I built in California, it had, it had the 12 volt system in it and it worked just fine. You know, I was able to, even with that little 2,500 watt inverter on my 12 volt system, uh, I was able to, to run a skill saw, uh, some, some basic power tools, the one thing it wouldn't run was my air compressor. I have, I would have to start my generator to run the air compressor. But that's one of the limitations that you usually have to live with. I mean, even my 20 volt, 24 volt system, my inverter doesn't like that big compressor. And, and maybe one day I'll build an air compressor with a DC motor on it that I can run directly off a of 24 volt because that would be a great solution, wouldn't it? You know, because the air compressor is the one thing I use a lot of that in my welder. But even the modified sine wave inverter still ran my skill saws. It still ran, you know, all of the stuff that I needed it to do. Even my washing machine, I was able to purchase a Stabber washing machine um, and, and it ran it just fine. One of the claims to fame of the, uh, of the Stabber was that those machines would run just fine on a modified sine wave inverter. Now, if you're running a, a radio or something like that, you get a lot, little bit of noise in there. You know, because of the you know the sine wave, it need the radio needs that perfect sine wave to to be able to grab per you know good reception without that little buzz in the background. But I mean, I, I ran my internet system just fine, uh, the TV, all of the things that you would normally run on a modified sine wave inverter. You now and but now you can get these sine wave inverters for pretty cheap. And and the problems that everybody said I would have, you know, with the wire runs and everything else, I just didn't have. It was probably about a 50 foot run um, or a little bit more. From my, from my solar panels to my battery. And I was able to find some used wire, some one-aught wire that I just took from my solar panels to my batteries and it worked just fine. And then from my batteries to my inverter, which was you know, only 10 feet away, I was able to get some welding cables and you know, cause they were flexible and I was able to hook my inverter up with that and it worked out great. And my lighting system was actually all 12 volts. So I was able to buy 12 volt bulbs you know, you can buy these RV bulbs and they're super bright. They're LEDs, they, they, they're very low consumption in power and you can power your whole lighting system in your entire house with just RV, you know, type lighting receptacles, you know, and they even make the screw in LED bulbs that are all ran off a of 12 volt now too. And I realize that 24 volt has the same option. You can wire your, 
your house uh, lighting with DC 24 volt as well you know and, and some of you probably asking you know why is why is DC current um, better for lighting well it's better in some ways because if you ever lose your your main inverter the, you know you have your basic priority loads in your house that you can still operate on you know even you know e even if it's too low a power for your inverter your DC loads are still met you know like my my well pump I have a, a DC well pump and you know and in and back in the day when I was running 12 volt my my deep my well pump would run on 12 volts and it was sufficient and and so uh, that worked out just fine for me anyways guys thanks a lot for watching hit that thumbs up if you liked the video hit that subscribe button thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one